Britain is having an election on June the 8th, three years ahead of schedule. That's because Theresa May, the Prime Minister, decided she wanted to bring forward the date and the main opposition parties agreed. Britons don't directly elect their Prime Minister. Instead, in June, all of the country's 650 constituencies will elect an MP on a first-past-the-post basis. The person who wins most votes in each area is elected for that parliamentary seat. The leader of the majority party, or coalition of parties, will then become Prime Minister. Currently, the ruling Conservatives have 330 MPs, which effectively means they have a majority of 17. That majority has been big enough to pass controversial Brexit legislation, but Theresa May hasn't been able to get through some of her domestic reforms, particularly new grammar schools. Also, she's never won a general election as Prime Minister. She took power when David Cameron resigned after the EU referendum, so this election is her chance to win a national endorsement. The biggest opposition party is the Labour Party, led by Jeremy Corbyn. Both the Conservatives and Labour are committed to Brexit, although Labour have promised to fight certain aspects of Mrs May's plans. In contrast, the third and fourth biggest parties in Parliament, the Scottish National Party with 54 seats and the Liberal Democrats with nine, have a more pro-EU stance. Both parties want to keep membership of the single market. The Lib Dems want a referendum on the terms of a Brexit deal, where voters would have the option to keep the UK in the EU. The SNP want another vote on Scottish independence to take place around the time of Brexit, probably in 2019, and that could lead to an independent Scotland joining the EU. In 1979, the biggest parties, Labour and the Conservatives, won just over 80% of the vote. Although that share has fallen below 70% in the last three elections, Britain's electoral system means that smaller parties find it hard to win seats unless their support is geographically concentrated. For example, the UK Independence Party, which was so influential in the EU referendum, has no representation in the House of Commons. It won nearly 4 million votes at the last election, more than the SNP and the Lib Dems put together, but it won only one seat and later lost it after the holder defected from the party. The UK electoral system also makes it possible for parties to win huge parliamentary majorities. In 1997, under Tony Blair, Labour won 43% of the vote, but 63% of the seats. This time, some election analysts predict the Conservative Party could win a similar landslide. Of course, none of this affects the House of Lords, the UK's upper chamber that reviews and revises legislation. Its 803 members, who are appointed and not elected, are mostly not Conservatives. But by convention, the upper chamber defers to the House of Commons, where the government has set out its plans in its election manifesto. While pollsters are pointing to a large Conservative victory on the 8th of June, they have been wrong in the past. Even small changes could radically alter the nature of Britain's next government as it leads the country towards Brexit.